Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm ZS Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at SoFi Stadium in LA at Canberra Create uh, 2025. I'm with Melody Brew, future work analyst for more insights. Uh, Mel, how you doing? Good. Good. This is uh, Canberra Create 2, I believe. And, this is the second one. And both of us have been to both. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of exciting. Okay, so this is the biggest one yet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good to see what's bigger than last year. Uh, Canva, interesting company. I think uh, I think both you and I passed on Google to come here and people looked at me like I had three eyes for like it, not going to the, yeah. one of the biggest cloud shows to come. We have this. 12 team at, at <laughs> Google Next, so I'm going I'm to trust those guys that they're yeah. there. But I actually think uh, it's justified in this way. I think Canva is a fascinating company. Uh, the loyalty around the users, you could feel it in the keynote, how much people love this yeah. company. And, yeah. you know, as an analyst, we're always looking for the next big thing. And, you know, Canva certainly seems like it's the next big thing, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, if you look at Canva over time, they really started out as this, like, small little, like, cutesy sort of design tool yeah. that was mostly used by individuals and then in schools. And now, as of last year, they're really making this big enterprise push. Yeah. So... Some of the, you know, I, I think they've had tremendous growth. I'd love to see some of their numbers that they talked about, you know, and billions of users, billions of designs each month. How many of those designs are like actually fall designs or are they tinkering around? I know? think a lot of it's tinkering. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah I, I just can't see how they're going to have that many. Uh, but maybe, who knows? And yeah. so last year, the big news was their launch of Enterprise. Yeah. Uh, this year, there was a ton of news in the keynote. Um, and there was four key pieces to it. The first one was uh, Canva Sweet, Sweet Turado, which I thought yes. was kind of an, you know, not very, sweet yeah, not a very exciting name right. for a company that wants to change the way we work. I know. But uh, they did try and roll more and more features into one thing. And, and it's not just a packaging exercise like Microsoft Office is. Right. They've actually uh, tried to build a lot of cross-capable uh, or functionality that's across all the different products. And so you can go from everything from ideation to creating documents, to editing images, to creating videos, to publishing a full website, all with one within one workflow within what, in, yeah. in the suite. And I think that that's so important now. People are always talking about like, you jump from one thing to another, you know, you're an hour into your day and you already have 10 tabs open and then, you know, you get distracted by things and to be able to actually keep that. In well, that's that the way we suite. work. <laughs> yeah. Right? It is. yeah. Um, but to be able to keep that in and do so many different things within that environment and not have to hop out of it. I mean, they do, we talked to yesterday in the analyst day about all the integrations. So if you do need, you know, an additional photo editor or whatever, they've got these integrations that you can pull in for those things. Yeah. But for the majority of your workflow, you can kind of stay within that visual suite. And they talked a lot about being able to simplify the complexity of work. And I read somewhere that people spend, uh, I think, 40% of the time managing work not actually working, and by bringing this all together in a suite, they're aiming to actually let you do all the work you need in Canva, or work in the app you want and be able to access Canva functionality, but their mission really is to democratize creative to yeah. even people that aren't creative, and yeah. that's, that's uh, I, think, I, I, think that, I think that's the whole thesis behind Design 2.0. Yeah. Now, the second piece of it was really um, their data plan, yes. right, and so um, they're trying to position themselves now. Not, they're not trying to be snowflake or something like that, but they do understand that we tell stories through data, we work with data, yes. and your ability to access data and then be able to manipulate it and create content around it is important. And uh, so they rolled out something called Sheets, which is their, I don't want to call it a spreadsheet because it's, 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 it's quite a bit different than it's that. It's sort of a spreadsheet. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a spreadsheet sort of for, for beginners or for people who want a spreadsheet that's more than just pure numbers yeah. and can do more. I think, you know, like who, people who live in, let's say, Excel, for example, they are... Uh, Your hubby, for instance, <laughs> like, a CFO. He's not a CFO. That was my dad. But. Oh, sorry. Dad was a CFO. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but he did M&A for many of years. So but he would live in Excel. He Yes. And he knows all the formulas and can you know do it yeah. real quick. And But for people who don't know the formulas, you can actually use AI to say, I need to summarize this, you know, take all these things and give it a thing and it will actually give you the formula. What I think is interesting is that it shows you the formula so you can actually verify it. Yeah. So you're able to actually verify it if the answer is correct or if it's just making something up based on all the numbers. But you don't need to create the formula yourself. That's the key. Yes. Yeah. And that's the thing that's great is because there's so many people who are like, I don't know the formula to get that over here and add these up. And, you know, there's a lot of complexity around that kind of stuff. So I think that's... It actually it. makes you wonder, why is that so hard? 
<laughs> Why? <laughs> right, I know, right? Yeah. I'm sure these other tools will get the AI built in eventually. But, but I think for most workers, I, was, I had uh, another data point I had read was that the majority of spreadsheets out there, like 90% of spreadsheets, are people just using it as a way to organize data. There's no formulas, no there's no calculations being right. done. All right. we're doing is using it as a way to, to organize data. And for that, I think Canvas Sheets is perfect. Yeah, and it's very much, you know, it's like a table, but then if you need to, I think the other part of the data play that they announced was this data visualization. Yeah. And that was really slick in the demos they used. It was. Yeah. I, and I think that's it's such a good point about you know, telling a story with data requires that visual. People really need to see more than just numbers or statistics if they see it in different charts. But what it does for you is it actually takes your data and looks at what's the best way to present this. So I don't have to decide. Should I use a chart? Should I use a pie chart? Should I use, you know, it, it automatically makes that suggestion to you based on yeah. what your your data is, is saying. And then there's all kinds of animations and everything. One thing I'm wondering, and I think this would be really cool if we, if I'm sure they'll get there eventually, if you could hook it up to your data so that it is, it's not static data where let's say, you know, there are a billion designs made and then it goes up to a billion 25. Do they, can you hook it up to that data where then those animations change kind of in real time. Yeah, that would be interesting because as your data comes in, and in fact, if you had a real-time data feed into a product like, say, stock quotes or something, yeah. you could actually create a living um, kind of animated uh, data visualization model yeah. really easily. I mean, you can do that today, but you have to write code to do it. Right. Right, yeah. So that'd be cool. So anyway, so we had uh, 2.0 and then we had uh, uh, Canva data. data and the third piece was Canva AI and it wasn't uh, and it appears that's sort of their uh, chat GPT like functionality where yeah. it allows you to go in query data ask it questions mm -hmm. uh, and but they, but across of course all the products actually use AI mm -hmm. but they're now trying to become more of a uh, kind of a standalone AI engine that you can use to, right. uh, to interact with your, your information and your content right yeah and I think it's really, uh, that's that's the kind of thing that's going to be helpful for people who aren't familiar with Canva or what it can do. I can, you know, you can say, mm. hey, help me make a birthday card or help me make a HR flyer to put, you know, like, and then it'll actually give you those things and those texts and tools, like, where take you to where it and maybe even actually give you a starting draft template for it, you know, so it helps with that, like, immediate get going kind of motion, I guess. But I'm wondering if... Um, Will more sophisticated users need that? And I think that's where we look at, you know, their enterprise play. So the, the, I would say the majority of the users that are here are the real, like, Canva fans. They're individual creators, yep. users. You know, they're, they're using this for social media, for all their, you know, their free content. But at the enterprise, I actually think the AI might be more useful because these people are, more, are less yeah. likely to be creative. There, you know, if it's a finance team or an HR team or even marketing team that's not on the creative side, but they need to make something, you know, just to kind of type it in. And then, of course, it's t tied to their brand guidelines and all of that. So I, I think the AI, it doesn't seem like it's super new in terms of functionality, but it's a good thing to have in the product. Yeah, you know, they, uh, in the analyst preview yesterday, they characterized users in two buckets, people being data shy and then people being data savvy. And it seems the first two announcements we talked about for people that were data shy, this lets them be a little more data savvy. With the AI one, it, you already know what data you have, but maybe for the data savvy people that are too creative, uh, this is better for them. And so, and in fact, they talked a lot about the coming together of productivity and um, and creative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, historically those two worlds are apart. Mm -hmm. And if they're trying to bring them together, they need they do need to address both sides of that coin. Yeah. 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 And then the, the fourth announcement, which, and I thought this was the most interesting because it, it opens the door to a whole other group of users too, mm -hmm. is Canva code. And yeah. it's not a programming language that you might think, yeah. but it's the ability to create apps and, um, and functions without writing any code. And so you saw people just think stuff up out of the air. The demo they gave, somebody wanted to create a game that did something, somebody else wanted to create some code that would you know, pull in information from a bunch of different sources, and then you would watch it 
create the code. Create the actual yeah. code. Yeah, I think that even just watching that, I think, is really interesting. So it's not just creating this like widget or thing for you. It's actually you see the code that it's it's writing yeah. in real time. And that's cool. Yeah. Yesterday in the analyst example, someone said I want a, a, a something that tells me what kind of smoothie for what mood you're in or whatever. And you know, I imagine you could really find, like kind of tailor that so like. You know, if you're tired, do you need more something that has more energy boost, more B12, you know, any of those yeah. types of things? But the cool thing about that, um, the code, it's a, a sort of, you know, the new vibe coding, coding, vibe coding. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's really like, it's vibe coding. It's so you get to just do it based on how you feel, like what you're thinking, what you're do. you know, and just, yeah. I just want to, I, I really wish I had this thing that could do this thing. And you just, you know, put that into the prompt. And it creates it. But then you can also drop it into your any of the templates or any of your creative documents that you've already made or create a website from it. So, yeah, yeah that'll be interesting. So okay. when you think about this company, right, this is a zero-sum game for a lot of workers. We don't want more apps. And I think when Canva first launched, they were dubbed the Adobe killer. Um, and certainly there's a lot of things you can do in this that in Canva that you would replace Adobe. Of course, people still hardcore marketers and sales are going to do Adobe. It looks like Sheets is more kind of an Excel, uh, Microsoft Office productivity tool. And uh, how do you do you see workers actually um, giving up the reliance on things like Microsoft Office and Adobe for Canva? I think there's a, those are such different user groups in yeah. my mind. You know, I think there are people that are just never going to get out of that Excel environment because that's what they're used to. It's what they, yeah. you know, if they're comfortable with it. It's a language they know so well. But for people who don't, and, you know, this came up so many times yesterday, it's like everybody has to do more with less, right? So for departments who are now having to, you know, create their own P&L and they have to create their own, you know, of course, creative documents, but other things beyond that, this gives people the tools to do that a little bit easier. Yeah. And, and, you know, I don't think any of this is going to replace jobs, but it helps people. To no, but I think it might it might change the shift in software. In fact, I think one of the brilliant things that they talked about on stage today was they give uh, Canva to all nonprofits and schools. And, and yeah, the that, schools, yeah. in the schools, the genius move. Because yeah. while it seems philanthropic and all that, and I'm sure there's an element of it to it, yeah. you teach all these kids in school to to How work to use using Canva. Canva, they're not using Microsoft Office when they get in the workplace. Right. Yeah. And so many of these kids, I mean, you see all these like social media influencers, like I think they grew up with Canva. Yeah. They, it's a it's such a like intuitive tool for them. So I think you know that's a, a really smart play. Adobe did similar things, and they have you know the Adobe universities and all yeah. of that. So. I think you know most most um, enterprise software companies now are doing some sort of upskilling, you know, some some teaching in that regard. But um, yeah, I think that's a good move, and I think they're they're addressing a different audience in a lot of ways, even on the enterprise stuff. Like you know, that, for instance, you know, I was at um, Adobe Summit this year. They had Coca Cola there as a customer, and Coca Cola is here as a customer. So it's not necessarily yeah, yeah. one or the other. Oftentimes, people might have both. Yeah, what I'm fascinated to see, though, is their whole the Canvas whole thesis is that everybody should be creative. Yeah. Right? And if you think of a traditional company, take your like AR, HR officer, for instance. Right. They typically would just create a memo and send it to everybody or an email. Well, why couldn't they create a nice-looking Canva document with graphics on it, company letter, and things like right. that? And... Uh, you know, perhaps we are moving to an era where everyone is creative, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, you know, IT people that send memos out historically look very plain. Well, why can't that be something that's a little more visual appealing? Yeah. Right? Um, you know, or, you know, restaurants that create their menus in-house, things like that. It's always pretty boring. That could be, you know, there's a creative element to that. And so, yeah. you, know, are, you know, is Canva the company to actually create this generation of content creators of, from people and jobs that historically weren't, right? And yeah. so it's an interesting thesis. And then, you know, part of it is, I don't know if people really in those roles want to be creative, right. but at least now they have the capability to. But they can't be, yeah. They just have to be. I mean, it's a resource, resource constraint. Sometimes it just have to be. So. Yeah. So I have a question for you now. What are you most excited about using? Uh, I think the sheet's part of it. You know, I, um, as analysts, we do a lot of stuff with Excel. Uh, I, I'm admitting I'm not a very good Excel user uh, and so I typically have to take the data 
send it to somebody, they create all my slides and do the analysis and stuff. If I can pull it up in Canva and just have it do stuff for me, yeah. right, and, and be a lot more visually appealing, that's great because right now a lot of the, you know, sort of the liberals, we do white papers and stuff, you know, very traditional PowerPoints aren't all that exciting. Right. They tell they tell her a story, but they do it in a very basic way. And so that's right. what I'm excited about. How about you? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the same thing, like with, um, I love the visualization, the data visual, visualization, but the other thing is they, that they announced with these scrolling documents. And uh, there was a lot of oohs and ahs around that. And I think there's a, like very specific use cases for that, like where you don't want multi-page documents, but you say you have like, you know, a white paper, for example. That's a scrolling document. Yeah. You can actually, instead of putting it in PDF that's plain and boring, you can actually add these visualizations into it. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking research reports can change like pretty dramatically. So, that, so that's an interesting thing. In fact, I've been talking with uh, my uh, per, uh, my editor about this. Is like, because the white papers we create, they are in PDFs and they virtualize an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Yes. You read it, you get to the end, you flip the page. Well, why? Right. Right. We're reading it on a computer. There's no point. Web pages, we don't do that. Right. Right. But right. yet, with technical documents and stuff, we always go back to that PDF. Mm -hmm. And it, it does seem that, um, you know, we, uh, uh, really an overhaul in the way we consume content in business, you know, could be, you know, uh, greatly uplifted. Think, think of like yeah. equity analyst reports. Yeah. Those are the same. I mean, those things haven't changed yeah. in. 30 years right, <laughs> right? but uh, and but now so yeah much more interactive yeah. and you can, you can you tell a better story yeah. all of that I think I'm really excited to try that um, and I think that like if you think about those PDFs in the way that you're kind of you know you're you're not turning a page the PDF yeah <laughs> yeah. You know. yeah yeah <laughs> so I'm excited for that yeah all right so overall great event yep. yeah yeah although uh, neither of us wore a uh, bright orange and pink pastel yeah, colors. So. Very colorful around. Yeah, yeah, so. I mean, I did like go out of my high heels into tennis shoes. That's yeah, yeah. like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, well, it's good for you to get out of your comfort zone sometimes, y'all. So, uh, anything else you want to add? No, I think... No. That, yeah, this is good. No, I'm excited yeah. to see where the company goes. $40 billion valuation now. Um, there's a lot of expectations on this company. I've heard that yes. there's, there's more than one company's tried to acquire them. They've given yep. them the old Heisman and said they're right. going to go public. Yeah, and right. I think, I mean, so you and I are both very familiar with Kelly Stackelberg. Yeah. Who came, is the new CFO. She took Zoom public. I think when you look at something like that. Great hire. Yeah. Great hire. Yeah. She's amazing. Um, but when you look at something like that, I, I, someone like Kelly doesn't come to a company like this just because it's, you know, she has yeah. spare time. She just came to do something. Yeah, right? when, when, uh, when it was announced she was leaving, uh, I, I was talking to her. She hadn't said where she was going yet, but you could tell how excited she was about where she was going. And then when she turned up at Canva, that made some sense, right? And so yeah. she can do the IPO playbook all over again. And I think one of the really interesting things that Kelly brings is Zoom uh, went through this. Uh, their, their, their sales motion was a lot like Canvas. They, they gave a lot of seats to a lot of right. users to use for free. And then they went and converted them to enterprise. And then they, they did go through a lot of ups and downs for to solidify that enterprise motion. Mm -hmm. So Kelly could take a lot of those lessons learned lessons from, from Zoom, mm -hmm. bring them to Canva and make sure that they don't repeat those same mistakes. They'll make different mistakes, but at least they won't repeat those mistakes. <laughs> Not yeah, so so I think that very, very, very smart hire. So Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, and then uh, that's a wrap then. I think that's that, right. the, but it was a very good event. I'm glad to see the company continue to innovate. Yeah. And I will say that uh, I haven't seen an audience this passionate about the about product. <laughs> then in a long, it's a little over the top sometimes, but I understand why. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm Bath and Melody Brew for more insights. I'm Zia Scarab out from ZK Reach. And thanks for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZCast.